Look at this, uh, <clears throat> this breakfast area in this hotel. This was uh, $66 a night, I think, Lita found it for. And you've got uh, rooms along here. And then there's some up here along this balcony here. I remember seeing this in the pictures of the hotel, but I completely forgot about it. They probably used to have an indoor pool here. And for insurance reasons, they probably filled it in. Most of the hotels I was looking at, the first one I was looking at was like 4.3. I thought it was 4.3 out of 10, out of 5. Then I got to looking a little bit more and it was 4.3 out of 10. I was like, ooh. <clears throat> so this one was actually on Hotels.com. It was like $3 more expensive. And it was 8.3. But then Lita found it even cheaper online. But the other one had an indoor pool. I, I mean... I'd have never swam. I'd rather have a cleaner room than uh, be able to swim. Warning, the YouTuber you are about to watch does not care about your one view. So don't think he will kiss your ass to keep you watching. If you talk shit, he will talk shit back. If you become rude, you will be blocked. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, guys, we just dropped the uh, <clears throat> the orange sign off. It looks like we did uh, 2,000 miles, and everything paid $3,000. Um, pretty sure I reset the mileage when I when I started these partials. Ends up being $1.50 a mile, which... isn't the greatest especially with the amount of work that I had to do loading all this stuff and tarping everything it's just really hard to find partials it's really hard to find loads um, along the way or anything that really pays decently right now everything's pretty rough um, 
I'm afraid that since we got a dollar seventy a mile for this pontoon boat, that it's going to be an even bigger pain in the butt. <clears throat> Once we get it loaded up, I'll uh, I'll measure the deck and make sure that it was only twenty four feet. We may go get it weighed as well, just to make sure that it is three thousand pounds, <clears throat> and then we'll know what we can put on put on the back there to make even more money for the week because <clears throat> last week was terrible I haven't really had uh, man I haven't really had too much luck for this whole time I've been out um, I think this time out is the same time I ran the five partials I'm working on my fourth week out I'll be out for four weeks straight this week now and I don't know if I'm even going to go home after this because I haven't, I haven't really made enough money to justify going home. So I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know. We'll see you there when we pick up the pontoon boat, though. All right, so when I told my phone to take me to the Copart, the Copart in Big Lake, Minnesota, it took me to the wrong Copart. So I get here, and uh, he's like, oh, it's in a different lot, but I can print out the paperwork for you here to give it to them over there. So I'm like, okay, cool. And I get in the truck, and I go to plug in my phone, and the Ford Sync 3 is trash. I'm always having to uninstall Android Auto and install it. In order for it to pick up that my phone's plugged in. Anyways, I look down on the paperwork and it says this is a sublot. Payments must be taken at the main yard location. So I take this piece of paper back in there and I'm like, says on here that I have to pay at the main yard location. Is this the main yard location? And he's like, yes. I was like, man, you were gonna let me drive all the way over there knowing that there was a payment due on this? Now, the broker told me there was a $15 payment, and they added an extra $15 to the rate con to cover it. It was $50, so I'm going to have to get back with that broker. They're going to have to cut me another rate con for the remaining balance. So, Android Auto is working now. Piece of shit. Swear to God. You know, the engine and the transmission seem like they're doing great. It's all the extra little things that I paid for when I when I bought this thing that don't want to work. Tire pressure monitor system. And the, the biggest thing is this Ford Sync 3 dash crap. It's so trash. All right. So when I first told my GPS to take me over there, it was eight minutes away from where we dropped the orange sign. So we drove the eight minutes, but now it's saying 41 minutes for the actual address. I mean, it's a good thing it messed up and brought me over here because I would have went to that sublot and not been able to pick it up because they owed money. And it says right here that um, checks, says somewhere like checks won't be taken or some shit. So, all right, let me drive uh, about 40, 40 more minutes. We'll, uh, We'll go pick up this boat. This is some of the issues that I have with this Ford Sync 3. So right now, I'm on hold on the telephone. That's that's hold music on the telephone. But I'm trying to hang up the phone because I want to call him later. And you hit this button, hang up, and nothing happens. Sometimes this whole screen locks up, you know, but it's allowing me into all the other all the other menus it just won't let me hang up the phone you know it's shit like this right here like I spent a lot of money on this truck and nothing ever works alright guys there she is that's uh, that's the boat we're picking up um, it's like there's a uh, not too much damage done to it. Um, he's gonna go ahead and try to put it on here with a forklift. 
So there's some damage back there. I'll have to uh, get up here and get some really good pictures. Yeah, there's some damage back here. Um, he said he's going to try to grab it with a forklift. If it, if it seems like he can keep it balanced and put it on the trailer, then that's what he'll do. Um, if not, he said we might just have to go ahead and winch it on. I told him I was prepared to winch it, so it's, it's whatever. If he can load it, great. I mean, if he can't, what can you do, right? So let's see what he can do here. I'm gonna use a, uh, a ratchet strap to pull this thing up more. So we can get the most room out of it. All right, so he was able to fork it on. Um, it's barely wanting to stay on there, so I, I threw that wheel truck back there, but uh, everything's so wet and icy, still wanting to slide back. Um, so what I'm probably gonna do, this thing's, this thing's longer than they said, so I'm gonna have to throw a tape measure on this. Um, this isn't gonna work as a, uh, as a partial like they thought. Let me grab my tape measure. We'll, we'll throw a measurement on here and uh, see what we can do. All right, so we're looking at about, uh, we'll just we'll just call it 29 feet. This was listed as a 24 footer. Um, I may have to do something with that top as well. <clears throat> but I think what I need to do, see I got the tape measure up here, right at about the tongue. Uh, maybe what I could do is pull it forward and stick this over top of the toolbox, but then it's gonna screw me on getting into my toolbox. Um, huh. I wonder what actually holds this on. Surely it's not just that strap right there. Well, I guess it's got that, that cable there too, that breakaway cable. Um, I don't know. Let me let me see what we can do here. All right, so we got the top laid down. There's some hooks up here. All you have to do is kind of lift up on it, and then it kind of falls down. But I noticed over here, there's a uh, spot where that bar rubs on the seats. And I think oh, a thousand miles driving, and it bouncing up and down, hitting these seats, might uh, end up tearing it. So I'm going to uh, zippy tie. Uh, a glove to this corner to keep it from boogering that corner up. All right, so we got a uh, an old glove that be tied to this thing because uh, this thing mounts up and down. I didn't want it to booger up the corner of that vinyl. Um, I probably have a thousand pounds worth of snow in here, <laughs> so hopefully this stuff starts melting. Um, I'm sticking up a lot higher from the truck than I was hoping so this is probably gonna be like a wall of wind I still have to figure out oh, dangerous walking down this uh, so I got the trailer to the 
this trailer to my trailer. Now I have to figure out the boat to the trailer. All they have is that strap and that. Um, I thought about going over top of these. Um, ugh. I was going to go over top of these. That piece of trim won't allow me to throw a strap over top of those tanks and over. Um, maybe I could go around. That corner's missing off of that. <clears throat> maybe I can go on top of this deck and down. And then maybe this very front. Over top of these tanks and down. And hopefully that holds the boat down to the trailer. I guess they never really thought. Because see, there's going to be a lot of wind that you wouldn't normally have just pulling a trailer down the road. Now you're going to have all this wind coming up under there trying to pick that boat up. And that's the last thing I need is for this thing to lift off the trailer and hurt someone or kill someone. So we got to figure this out. I'm going to go ahead and throw me a ratchet on that. That'll keep that from bouncing around too much. Um, and I'm just going to walk around make sure there's nothing loose. It may fall off or maybe a potential hazard. All right, there it is. So we have one, two, three, four straps on the trailer. I put two tire straps on there just because why not, right? And then we have the one strap holding the boat to the trailer here. We've got this strap holding this awning from bouncing around. And then I threw another strap across the back of the boat to keep the boat on the trailer. This one, I, I mean, they did this a lot better with these straps here to hold the back to the trailer. But the front, they kind of kind of dropped the ball on that. Um, so I called the broker on this and I told him, I said, it's eight feet longer. <clears throat> and uh, I said, it cost me $50 to pick this up when you guys said it was going to be 15 He's like, all right, well, well, send me the receipt for the $50. He's like, I don't know what you want me to do about the extra four feet. I was like, well, it's, it's four more feet than you thought. I, than you said. I said, uh, that, that could cost me on my next partial here. And he's like, well, nothing I can do about that. The person that usually deals with the loads isn't in the office today. Of course. Of course, they're never in the office when you have a, an, an issue with a load and trying to get more money out of them, right? So he's like, well, all I can tell you to do is call the customer and see what he can do for you. I'm like, okay, fine. So I hang up the phone and I look at all the information. Now they didn't have an address on picking this up or dropping this off. They just told this, all this said was, uh, what was it? Something Minnesota. The broker's the one that told me you're picking up at a Copart. So that's how I knew I was coming to a Copart. And then on the delivery address, it just says um, Butler, Tennessee. So there's no address there either. So I got Lee to call in to find out uh, exactly. I wonder if that motor stays up like that. I mean, obviously it does. Surely they've got it locked in place. I don't know much about boats, guys. I'm not going to lie. I mean, they pick them up for travel with that. That motor's messed up right there, too. So, anyways, that's what we're going to go with there. We'll check it again down the road. Um, i got to put those binders up. Again, I didn't use chains on this because I didn't want to scratch the frame up somewhere. And uh, don't have an issue with that. I need to tighten that strap a little more problem is the way I have this strapped is it's squishing down the springs of the trailer <clears throat> so if it bounces these straps could come loose so hopefully it doesn't let me uh let me double check all these straps again and we'll hit the road all right so we just got this boat loaded up we are hitting the road we uh I called the customer and I told him, I said, this is about, this is about four feet longer than what, uh, than what it was listed for. Holes required. 
find an alternative route. Um, so I told him, uh, you know, I offered him I, I would do it for an extra 300. It'll make it an even 2,000. Make it about two bucks a mile. <clears throat> of course, this is saying 1,100 miles to get to his house from here. Of course, that's bypassing tolls. Let me see what we can do. What uh, we take tolls away. I don't want to get stuck on any of those BS roads that I got stuck on on the way up. So, anyway, so you agreed to the $300. We're going to start looking for a partial. We've got about 11, 12 feet of deck, depending on how tall it is. And uh, about 5,000, 6,000 pounds. Uh, there's a lot of snow in this boat, so there's probably... <laughs> There's probably 500 pounds of snow in this boat. I'm hoping maybe it melts and we can do away with it like that. 56 minutes slower tolls. All right, so we're on the road. All right, guys, we just uh, hopped on the board and found a uh, partial. It's uh, nine feet, 800 pounds. Um, some type of farm equipment stuff. Um, I ended up stopping and throwing some chains and binders on this as well because it was rocking kind of back and forth. Wasn't crazy about it. So let me grab the uh, GoPro, I'll set you guys up, we'll see what we got. All right, so that's what we got. Um, normally, most people would just run their chains through this, through this tubing, and pull to either side. The issue I have with that is the chain doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, so it's not pulling down on it. Uh, one thing you can do is you can slide your 4x4 in there and then set the chain kind of down across it. And that may be what we may do. Or what I may do is we'll come, we'll come around this like this on both sides. And then that way that's pulling that tube down and it's keeping it from going front to back. The only issue I see with the way I was going to do it there is it doesn't stick out on this other side like it does on that side. So I would have to come up over this, like this, which isn't, isn't the end of the world. Um, so I don't know, I'm gonna try to chain it down like that and we'll see, what, we'll see what it looks like. And if that looks okay, we'll leave it like that. If not, then we might shove a four by four in there and then run the chain over the four by four. And then the four by four will pull down on it. All right, so I, th I think the original is gonna be okay. So we went over these pipes and then down and back. And this is keeping it from pulling up. And that's keeping it from going down, if that makes any sense. In other words, if I'd have ran this chain in here, the chain would have never actually sat and held down on this. All it would be holding is left to right. There would always be that gap because you're gonna have the the distance between your 
ratchet binder to your trailer so it may be okay it might like jitter going down the road i don't want it to move at all i want it to be as as tight down to the floor as we can possibly be and then i'll show you guys the other side here this is going to uh morgantown west virginia um it adds oh that guy forgot his pen it adds 350 miles. If I drop this off, it adds 350 miles to me dropping that off. And I got 700 for this. And I ended up getting, God, I can't remember if I told you guys I got another uh, 300 for that. So that ends up being $2 a mile. And this is technically $2 a mile. It's not, okay, technically it's not $2 a mile. It's $700 for 980 miles. I had to drive right through this city to get here. I didn't see anything else on the load board and it only added 350 miles and I think I might be able to after we drop that off we might be able to throw something else on going down to drop this off the only issue with this is I was hoping they would fork this off or something too but they're wanting to just push this off the back of the trail and the guy's gonna hook it up to his pickup truck and drive away with it with that being said I'm not going to be able to have anything on the back of the trailer when we go to drop this off because it'll be in the way unless I can drive it on and off because it'll be in the way of us backing that off. So I don't know. And then this this came with this little wing thing here. Um, probably just going to slide it up under here and, and maybe throw a strap over it and should be good enough. It weighs like five pounds if that. All right. Another thing I was thinking about doing is dropping this front end down screwing this jack all the way down and then that'll bring this this down so we won't catch as much wind so i'm going to go through here and i'm going to loosen up all these straps and i'm going to screw that down and then we'll go back through and we'll tighten everything back up again uh, there's that piece strap down um i just have to loosen the chains on this other side and then we can screw jack that that front down all right so i moved my timbers forward so that this would set on that instead of putting all the pressure on that um, and then I just went around and tightened up all the straps again we did all the uh, chains and binders and this is crazy oh that that must have just loosened up um, yeah so there we go let me uh, let me pick up my ammo cans and we'll uh, I've seen a barbecue place down the road uh, Baldi's or something I was gonna stop by and uh, it's right next to McDonald's, so I'm going to try not to eat McDonald's. All right, guys, here's a funny story. So uh, we are at Walmart. The same Walmart. I bought the batteries for the truck when my truck uh, wouldn't start in Rochester. Did a lot more snow back then. But here's the issue we're having now. So I got out to check the load and um, noticed my trailer lights weren't working. I was like, wow, that's weird. My hazards and everything else work, but my running lights don't work. So, um, see how those flash? That, um, that's my brake lights and my turn lights working. These lights in the middle were supposed to come on, but they didn't. So, anyways, I Googled it, and some guy said he had a 2017 and he kept blowing fuse number 99 so i pulled out fuse number 99 and sure enough it was blown so i took a fuse out that wasn't being used it was for the moon roof obviously i don't have a moon roof so that's not the issue <clears throat> and i swapped it in there and still nothing i did get a faint glow on some lights up here toward the front of the trailer but the ones in the back wouldn't work so i'm gonna run in there uh, buy a test lamp, a test light, and uh, some fuses, because um, I don't have any 30s. I and Ford put like six different types of fuses in this piece of shit. <clears throat> they couldn't just stick with one type of fuse, so you, all you had to do is carry one type of fuse. No, they have all these three blades and two blades and big blades and little blades. Such a pain in the ass. Like seriously. So. uh me running here i'm glad i won't be laying in the snow um and i'm gonna see if i can figure out what's going on with this thing all right so walmart did not have the fuses 
so I had to drive down the road to AutoZone. Only problem with this is the closest I could get parked here is, uh, it's like a mile away. <clears throat> I ended up running there. I bought, um, so I guess it's a Micro 2 uh, fuse. Uh, these weren't even in the right spot, and these were the last ones they had. I was hoping they had more 30s because that's what that uh, trailer light takes. Uh, we are at a construction site way down here. All right, so what you want to do is you want to take your test light and you want to go to each side of the fuses. That's why they have these little ho holes in the top of the fuses so you can touch your light to the fuse to see if it's, if it's good or bad without actually pulling the fuse out. Just like this. So it should light up on both sides. That light up. Kind of hard to do it looking through a camera. And that one lit up. You know, and you just go through each one and this is gonna tell you if that fuse is bad or not. So let me run through all these fuses and uh, I'll get back to you guys. All right, so I think I found the problem. Look how they have this wire running hard into this square channel that they have welded on here. And then what happens, I bet it would have happened sooner, but I have this strap right here that's keeping this from pulling too much but I bet this dangling down would have cut into these wires I mean I can see I can see some bare wire on some of this so the only thing I can really think to do I can't pull any out it, it doesn't have any slack in it um, I wish I had some liquid electric tape. Alright guys, I've been working on it for about an hour and a half now. I, I, I can't figure it out. They've got so many different splices and connectors and... So I thought I had it working. I, I changed the fuse out. And um, I didn't want to plug the connector in just in case there was a short. I didn't want to blow that fuse. So I connected, I connected the trailer wires to one of those extra batteries. And I couldn't get it to work. So I took the test light and I tried to go along there. And everything's so rusty and stuff's painted over. And it's dark outside. I can't tell if I'm probing the right fucking wire. This trailer company has no business being in business. I can't believe the shit that they're putting out on the road. It it drives me nuts. I hope they fucking see this shit too. Anyways, the wires are getting warm. You can touch the wires and the wires are warm. But I think what happened was I had them unplugged for so long... that the wires cooled off because when I plugged them back in when I gave up I was like screw it I'm just going to plug them back in put on my hazards and drive somewhere well they started working I was like what the fuck so I went around I started cleaning up by the time I got done cleaning up they quit working again We ended up at a place called um, Blair's Farm and Fleet. Uh, it was the only place around that uh, sold trailer wire that was open right now. We bought a um, hundred foot of trailer wire because they don't sell it by the foot. So I guess instead of sleeping tonight, we are rewiring a trailer. 
All right, so it's uh, currently about 9.45 at night now. Uh, they closed at uh, 9. Hope I have everything I need. Um, so I've pretty much got the wire pulled to the front now. Uh, what a pain in the ass that is because they put this shitty square tubing and they welded the tubing to the frame and you're supposed to feed the wiring through that. I mean, that's all fine and dandy, but why didn't they just use that money from them from that square tubing and just buy better wire you know the big tex wire has that big thick coating on the outside and then they just ran those eyelets through the frame and you just run the wire through the frame and you don't have to worry about you know the worst part about this isn't isn't that it's 17 degrees out right now and i'm i'm wiring a trailer in, in a parking lot it's that i had to go back and forth five million times because as you're pulling the wire over, that shit gets caught over here. So you come over here and you pull you some slack. Then you have to go to this spot over here and pull you some slack. And then it gets stuck over here again. What a pain in the ass. These guys have no business building trailers. Oh, it's, uh, it's 8 in the morning. I was out there till 12.30 last night. I ran out of those, uh, ran out of those clips. I got everything but, um, two yellow side markers done. And for some reason, the turn signals that I have, uh, about midway up the trailer, one of them's not, I think it's the driver's side's not working. It works with the, uh, running lights, but it's not working with the, um, turn signal. So maybe something happened with that blue clip thing that we uh, that we had to put on there. I still didn't see. I still didn't see what the problem was. Um, and it took so long because I was trying to clean up a lot of that mess back there. Honestly, I got so cold. I I, I just started clipping like they did. I was like, screw it freezing to death I'm just gonna get these lights going I mean my original plan was when I went home this time I was gonna rewire it anyways and now this this kind of forced me to do a lot of it here I wanted to buy the good wire though the, the good thick wire the kind that we used on the big techs but they didn't have that here <laughs> So we got stuck using what they had. So I'm going to get up and uh, do pre-trip. I was really thinking I was going to make some good money this week with these two loads paying so good already. And now this has put me behind. I lost about six hours of driving yesterday because of this. That sucks. All right, guys, we just uh, stopped right outside of uh, Chicago um, for our 30-minute break. Um, I've been on the boards trying to find... Um, so look at that. Tire pressure sensor fault. Man, this... I swear, there's always something with this. But... Um, been on, oh, you're so stupid. Um, somebody told me to turn that off. It's nice when I need it and it works. Like, sometimes I'll be like, you know, find address. And it'll be like some ridiculous address. I'm like, surely it's not going to know. But it'll pick it up. But I'll say something simple like, you know, take me to Chicago, Illinois. And it'll be like, did you say Hawaii? I'm like, no. Anyways, I've been on the boards trying to find something for after when we... So we're going to West Virginia to drop that green thing off. Um... Problem is, I can't put anything on the back because we have to unload the boat. Um, I thought about if I pick something up, maybe I can push this boat backwards and then re-strap and re-chain it all down. But uh, it would have to pay well for me to even consider doing all that work. I guess he's going to have some guy meet me there and they want to try to just roll it off the trailer. 
what I'll probably do is hook the winch up to it. That way it doesn't get out of control when we're slowly lowering it back. Um, that's all I know to do. Dropping that front end has helped a lot. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting, I think, nine miles to the gallon. Let me see. Uh, the problem is 9.1. I idled last night because I was... I was so cold and exhausted. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I got, I got to get my core body temperature back up or else I'm going to get sick as a dog. Anyways, this is where we stopped. I'm actually uh, going to eat some Popeyes for the very first time. Don't look at the truck. It's such a mess in here. I got the fuse panel off down there. I've got the fuse panel off from up there. I got tools everywhere. Don't even close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right, we're gonna do our 30 minute break, blah, 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 30 minute break, and we are going to hit the road. 